Hello, welcome to our program. I'm your host, Ron Whitlock. Will there ever be a Veterans Administration Hospital built in Greater South Texas to provide medical care desperately needed to all the veterans who are currently taking buses all the way to San Antonio and are getting private transportation all the way to Audie Murphy Hospital in San Antonio? We're going to discuss that issue. There's been an awful lot of political support for building such a facility, but the actual bureaucracy of the Veterans Administration seems to be currently opposed to such a move. Discuss it in the studio. Felix Rodriguez, immediate past VFW commander for the VFW region, stretching from Laredo south to Brownsville and northward. And Dan McLean, who is the CEO of the Hardingen Medical Center in Hardingen. Both gentlemen, Vietnam veterans. Mr. McLean, an Air Force pilot, and Mr. Rodriguez, your service was doing what? Now, this is an oxymoron, military intelligence, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see how intelligent you are, Mr. Rodriguez, today on being able to add a little bit of, of information to our audience as to okay. where it stands, especially those who are veterans themselves, have relatives, friends, and neighbors who are veterans. Are they continually going to have to go all the way to San Antonio to get service? Or is there, in fact, any realistic expectation that a veterans hospital will ever be built in greater South Texas? Your prognostication? Well, currently, again, we, we are working towards uh, the fulfilling, having this uh, project uh, come to fruition, that we do have a hospital here in the Rio Grande Valley, a veterans administration hospital here in the Rio Grande Valley. How does it look? I don't think we're even halfway there yet. Now, we don't have the support in the Senate. We, we've got a lot of support. We do have a lot of support in, in the House of Representatives. As a matter of fact, I, more than the majority of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs that Bob Filner chairs supports this effort. But we don't see that uh, the enthusiasm in the Senate <coughs> so far. Now, in the <coughs> Congress currently seated, Senator Cornyn, Sponsored a bill. Hutchison jumped on board, both Texas senators on board for that. That's important because this hospital would, in fact, be within their jurisdiction as both sitting United States senators. Senator John Kerry jumped on board, Senator Henry Clinton, and Barack Obama, who is running for the presidency of the United States as a Democrat, has come out in favor of it. He said it on the Texas debate. Some of his people have told me in interviews that he is behind 100 percent and even after leaving the Texas campaign trail has brought it out in other events around the nation again saying what a travesty it is that veterans such as yourself and yourself Dan do not have the coverage and health care needs you have right now provided by an actual VA hospital so now's your time Barack Obama may be your man who can bring it to the for, bring it to you, or perhaps the other candidate, John McCain might be able to bring it to you. But where does Senator McCain stand? You tell us that he is not in favor of bricks and mortar. That is true. Senator John McCain is less than enthusiastic about any one of these, uh, le the legislation that is currently in Congress. Uh, certainly as a senator, he has not, uh, is not behind the Senate Bill 1838 that uh, John Cornyn and K. Bailey Hutchison are carrying in the Senate. He does not support construction of uh, new hospitals. He does uh, support super centers, super medical centers, such as what we have here in Harlingen and the new one in Florida. And I, 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 I want to say that it's in, um, it's not in Tampa, but it, that's a new one that has just recently been constructed in Florida, and that those are, that's the concept that he supports. So by virtue of that, do you think most veterans are going to vote for Obama? Because they um, surely know, he said quite forthrightly, he's in favor of building a hospital, and his opponent, John McCain, said he's not. So therefore, you would assume 
You're going to vote for Obama at this point rather than McCain? That's the way it looks. So the majority of the veterans, most of the veterans that I speak with, and when we do, when we do meet, uh, most of us are, uh, are, we, are, we, are we, we will be voting for, for Obama. Mr. McLean, you're a CEO of an existing hospital in the region. Many hospitals and their chief executive officers, such as yourself, are of the opinion that rather than bringing in dollars and millions of dollars to build bricks and mortar, that the VA needs to contract directly with hospitals, such as your, your own, that you head up, in order to provide facilities and services. You have the technology, you have the staffing, state-of-the-art, world-class, on the ground right now, provide those services tomorrow, you just give us a contract. I came to the Valley in 1997, and one of the first things that I recognized is that uh, veterans were having to travel to Audie Murphy. I contacted the VA at that time and began working with the VA towards things that we could do directly in the Valley. And we did accomplish some contracting for outpatient services, but for inpatient services, they continued to insist that the veterans go to um, Artie Murphy. The, the reasoning behind this is that they have some specialty programs at Audie Murphy that they need to protect. If they don't have the appropriate volumes to support those programs, they won't be able to protect those programs. So they continue to accumulate those specialty patients into those programs. They've just swept all the rest of the patients along with it. My stance has always been that we have the capacity in the valley today to care for our patients, our, our veteran patients in the valley, near home, near their loved ones, near their friends and, and family, without having to travel all the way to uh, San Antonio. Not just for diagnostic tests, but for some of the more uh, pedantic, regular kinds of things that you go to a hospital for. Maybe some of the super subspecialty things still go to Audie Murphy. Uh, that's only rational care. Eventually, the volume of patients, not just um, uh, VA patients, not just veterans, but general patients in the Valley, will cause us to need to build more beds. And I think VA hospital at that point in time is a very appropriate thing. But today, right now, in providing service, we have the capacity to do it here. We can work with the VA to determine what's appropriate to protect their programs as well as provide uh, much better service to our veterans. Uh, the new VA center in Harlingen is exemplary. It is a beautiful center for outpatient type care. They're also uh, projecting a uh, ambulatory surgery center, but there are many other inpatient types of programs that could be contracted with local hospitals, precluding the trip to uh, San Antonio. So with Valley Baptist right across from this facility next to the rack, your facility just a few blocks away, uh, why should this not be the focus uh, rather, as opposed to bricks and mortar, either one of you. Well, we're, we're, we're talking about kind of two different things. The politicians and supporting uh, Senator Obama, uh, Senator Cornyn uh, Hutchinson, supporting the idea of building a, a facility is a very good thing, and, I, and I'm greatly in support of that as well at the appropriate time. But on Senator McCain's stance, we don't need to spend the money till we need to spend the money. The facilities are here now. I think it's really the VA administration in setting up a rational program of using facilities that are available and services that are available in conjunction with what they have in San Antonio that really needs to be discussed. What we have, you see, this, this concept of providing um, the care and contracting with the local hospitals has been in effect, it's, it's, it's been around for a while. The problem that we've had with that is that the Veterans Administration has been very lax in paying timely for the care that the hospitals have, uh, that, that have cared for our veterans. It, it got so bad that our congressmen had to intervene at the behest of veterans that were receiving letters from the collection agencies. The congressman had, uh, Romain Hinojosa is one, and Solomon Ortiz signed on to that letter, and where they wrote the Veterans Administration secretary complaining of their being late in their payments to the local hospitals. The hospitals did not want to see any more veterans in, uh, because of because the Veterans Administration not paying timely. You're telling me still that even though the head people of the Veterans Administration told this reporter at the rack not too very long ago that they were going to make sure that the 
Hospitals in this region were paid promptly and quickly because there's a 30-day pay requirement mm -hmm. in the Veterans Administration that they're supposed to pay in 30 days. You're telling me that problem continues to exist. It continues to exist. Dan, the problem yeah, continues uh, to that's exist. That's true. You have to realize the Veterans Administration has never developed the infrastructure for handling bills and payment to the extent that it's happening now with some of the contracting and using local physicians and and local services. Because historically they provided all of the care, they Correct. weren't contracting Correct. out. So it's a new... It was all in-house and now it's a mixture of the two and that's, mm -hmm. that's a little more complicated. That's true. But they are, if they're not paying within 30 days, in violation of their own policy. That is correct. correct. So how many people do we need to get involved in this issue to make sure if, in fact, there is going to be services provided to veterans in the region by hospitals such as yours, Mr. McLean, and others, that they're going to be paid promptly, so they're going to continue to provide those services to veterans until a hospital is built or not built. This practice, uh, this, this uh, Veterans Administration being remiss and not paying timely, they're not paying their bills timely, uh, n also discourages the veterans from participating in or, or seeking specialty care at the hospitals when referred by the Veterans Administration because um, they don't pay their bills timely. So, and then you get the collection agency coming after you, coming after, after the, veteran. the veteran, after the veteran, and we don't need that. We don't need that. Most handle. veterans on a fixed income, they don't that have is time correct. for that. Yes, sir. It may so. adversely affect their credit, so they're going to pick it up and pay it out of their pocket and then try to go back to the bureaucracy and find out where the payment schedule is and the check. That's the case. That is the case. What a mess, Dan. Yes. I'd say the billing and collection systems in the healthcare industry are probably at the peak of their mess since I've been involved in it for over the last 30 years. And um, I'm told that the Veterans Administration is at the very worst. Well, it's certainly amongst the top group and needs improvement. Yes. But most all of them do. I mean, we, we, we see similar things in virtually every payer set, but the VA is right there with the, mm -hmm. with the worst. So, here you are. You're the spokesperson on this program. Everyone watching. Do you think it's really going to happen with so little support in Congress with the bureaucracy not in favor of what you're trying to do, and that is build an actual building for veterans in South Texas. Do they not understand that there are many veterans who live in Mexico or not part of the count? Do they not understand all the winter Texans that come down who are not part of the count? Has that particular issue been made available to those who are making this decision? Yes, correct? it has. Yes, it has. And to answer the first part of your question, I'm the eternal optimist. I believe we're going to have, we, we will have our Veterans Administration Hospital down here. I firmly believe that. Okay, the other thing that the, the Booz Allen Hamilton study does not take into consideration is the population shift, the, the, this matter of demographics. Okay, we have many of our congressmen from the northern states now understanding, they now understand that many of their veterans are moving down here, they're wintering down here, and staying. And we can see that at the Freddy Gonzalez uh, nursing home in McAllen, where Many of our winter Texans, vi winter visitors are coming down here to visit. They'll satisfy the six-month residency requirement for the state of Texas, and then they're eligible for, for housing at the nursing home. Many of them are staying. And we have petitions signed by many of our winter visitors at the, from, the, from the trailer parks that supporting our effort to have a hospital down here. And they're going back and letting their congressmen know that it's not just a deep south Texas uh, veterans issue. It's a matter that they should be looking into themselves. Okay. Mr. McLean, I see you shaking your head. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, the development of the RAC and eventually a medical school here, Veterans Administration Hospitals have been um, integral parts of the development of medical schools for training purposes yes, as sir. well. So as the RAC develops, as uh, the population continues to grow, as the demand continues to grow, and we continue sending this message over and over and over again to the right people, we will eventually have our VA hospital here. So as a veteran, but yet as a CEO of a hospital, you're still of the opinion that at some point in time, bricks and mortar and an actual physical hospital is necessarily something that needs to be yes, sir. planned for. Yes, sir. For the region, to meet its responsibilities to our returning veterans. Absolutely. And existing veterans. Yes, sir. 
Now, what about creating symbiosis with your, your group here in the region of South Texas and the El Paso group who is trying to come forward down through El Paso County Commissioner Veronica Escobar. We've talked to people in El Paso and they have an actual medical school that's already off the ground and going and they're beginning to begin make comments and start an initiative to try to get a hospital built there. Why not create a symbiosis between your group in South Texas and their group in far west Texas but still on the border because there are some similarities and if you can create make their problem your problem and their problem your problem wouldn't that be a political advantage for you to consider? It certainly is. As a matter of fact we have discussed that. Uh, as district commander District 18 commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars when we do have our conventions and, and, and trainings uh, be it in Austin, San Antonio or Dallas uh, we have district commanders from throughout the state of Texas meet, okay, and we do meet and discuss that. And so we do support their effort in El Paso. And uh, I, will be, I will be visiting with our comrades in El Paso so that we can come together and make this a two-pronged attack, I should say, using a military term here. As a matter of fact, we have the days... Um, there was an impression where the Rio Grande Valley was thought of as the land of mañana. That has never been my, I've never used that term. There's no mañana in my language, okay, for when we, we talked about the Rio Grande Valley. Okay, I don't approve of that. Your language is hoy. Si se puede. Si se puede. You're going to go to your El Paso comrades and say, let's join forces and try to get a VA hospital not only for the region of South Texas, which you represent, immediate past VFW commander, Brownsville Laredo, but now bring in El Paso and join forces. Why is that important and why will that work? Well, because again, it's, it's, it's a, a, it's, we need a hospital, they, they need a hospital in El Paso just like we do here, okay? We've been ignored for too long and uh, we need to get together, we need to work together and this is not a racial or ethnic group or a, 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 a partisan issue as well, this is a veterans issue. There's no room for Democrats or Republicans here. There's no room for anybody using racial or ethnic descriptions, okay, as to what we need down here. So yes, here on this show, we, I, can, I can say that we will be partnering with our brothers and sisters out of El Paso to ensure that they get what they need just like we get, we get what we need down here. Mr. McLean, they've already got Senator Cornyn, Hutchison, Kerry, Clinton, and Obama. They've got Silvestre Reyes, who's the most powerful Democrat in the House at this particular point in time, especially in the Lone Star State in El Paso. With that symbiosis, with his power in the House and these senators in the Senate side, that may be a good way to go. Well, for their, for their purposes. We're, we're accumulating more and more supporters. The issue is becoming more and more well known. Uh, the discussions with our senators, the discussions in Washington about this, and, and more and more information that's coming out has led to the new uh, VA center in Harlingen, which again is one of the new centers that's, that's exemplary. It um, is. It's just the beginning of a, a snowball that's going to gather speed and gather momentum and lead to us getting a hospital eventually. And we're now going to bring you some of the comments made by the Veterans Administration and their consultants as to the rationale behind why actually building a VA hospital does not meet the requirements of the current Veterans Administration policies and procedures. This presentation that we are going to have of the study and the veterans' response to the study uh, on uh, health care needs in South Texas. The VA was asked to perform a study to examine the need for a hospital in South Texas. Veteran stakeholder input was very important in shaping the, uh, the options which we considered. For veterans living in, the San An in Corpus Christi, it is a two to two and a half hour drive to San Antonio. And as we know only too well, the traveling to San Antonio from here is a five hour, one way, 10 hour round trip, a significant travel burden. Uh, we looked at what veterans were traveling to San Antonio for. Uh, and it turned out that almost 98% of the trips were for outpatient care. Care that, you know, for that 20 minute visit, for that 15 minute visit for exams and checkups and lab work and tests. The inpatient overnight hospitalization for three, four, five, six days was about, accounted for about 2% of the trips. And in 
the lower Rio Grande Valley, it is projected that we'll, there will be need for inpatient, about 15 inpatient beds in the year 2015. About so you're talking about, thing. frankly, thousands of what we call bed days of care, mm -hmm. where somebody's occupying that bed for a day, mm -hmm. thousands of bed days of care, uh, over 10,000, mm -hmm. really, close to 20. Uh, but when you, you, you divide the bed days of care by the number of days in a year and you come up with the number of beds you need. Okay, it's just about 15 beds. Okay. As a result, our recommendation really is to uh, construct a health care center that will be devoted to the outpatient specialty care of veterans, including beds for one day surgery and outpatient surgery and, 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 and th that type of care. Um, if we just built a small hospital without that, uh, veterans would not be well served because in very small hospitals, less than of, of this size, 15, 20 beds, um, there are real concerns about the quality of care that would be rendered, and we'd really be concerned that veterans would get substandard care in an environment like that. Again, our recommendation is to build a 158,000 square foot South Texas VA health care system. This expansion would occur in three phases between December of 07 and be completed in 2010. Talking to my friends, the veterans, they've been using the word hospital, mm -hmm. but this a center could be the same thing as a hospital, correct? It's going to be a large facility right. dedicated to the full spectrum of services, specialty services, that veterans need. To me, the study is invalid or void. When the study was here, the possibility of a hospital, I was told that not even if you had three times the veterans population would you get a hospital here. What I was saying then is what I just said now, was that a, ho a, a hospital that is a very, very small hospital would have severe limitations in its ability to care for the full spectrum of veteran needs. Felix Rodriguez, a wrap up. I just want to say that, uh, Mr. McLean, thank you again. Uh, it's, it's good to see you again. And uh, I want to thank you for the excellent services that you provide there um, out of Harlingen. And um, I'd like to think that the, this super center, the super clinic in Harlingen is doing, doing a really good job as well. Right. I look forward to this place providing the necessary services that our veterans need. The Veterans of Foreign Wars remains committed to, towards the construction of a hospital for our veterans here in the Rio Grande Valley. As an excuse, an excuse that we were given in the past for not having a, a hospital here was that we did not have a medical school. Well, I, I've always said that the converse is truer yet, and, and then they can't, they can't use that excuse anymore. Again, it's an excuse, not a reason. We have the Regional Academic Health Center now, okay? It's a two-year uh, internship program. I say that we can work hand-in-hand. Hand. We can have our VA, have, we'll have our cake and eat it too. We can have our VA hospital here and plus a fully accredited four-year medical school, the first professional medical school here in the Valley and they will, they will complement each other. A reaction, Dan? I think he's absolutely correct. I, I think the time is now. Uh, the, ground, the groundwork's been laid. The infrastructure is developing with the RAC, uh, the new Veterans Center in Harlingen. The need is clear. Uh, and speaking for all of the hospitals and, and professionals in the Valley, we're ready to take care of all of our patients, which include the, the veterans of foreign wars. Mm -hmm. Trento Garza is a Vietnam veteran, and he's a writer. His Veterans Voice column appears in the Rear Grand Guardian at rearguardian.com. This is what he says. Americans are very patriotic people, and nowhere else in America does patriotism run as high as it does here in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. If only those in power would feel the same and actually do something for the veterans and soldiers. Let's give them their just due. The local veterans and soon to be veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, let us make a lifelong dream a reality, a veterans hospital in the Rio Grande Valley. Till next time, adios.